I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. When your fridge stops working and you have a flood in the freezer and you have food that is spoiling, you desperately want to fix the problem. But finding the problem and ordering a new part or a new refrigerator could take a few days or longer. Today we are going to show you how to diagnose and deal with this emergency situation. We will show you what you can do if the condenser fan's motor is bad or if the control board or the compressor is bad. First check if the electricity reaches the fridge. How to do this quick check is shown in another video. Assume the electricity is reaching the fridge, but it is not cooling down and it's not making any of its usual noises. Open the back cover. You will see two main components. One is the compressor, the other is the condenser fan. They connect to the same pair of wires. The compressor is running fine if this tube is hot, while the other tube is not hot. The condenser fan is working if the fan turns. There are three possibilities. Situation one, the compressor is running, but the condenser fan is not running. See the pair of white and pink wires. They go to both the condenser fan and the compressor. Since the compressor is running, it means electricity reaches this section. We need to check the condenser fan motor. The condenser fan motor often fails because it works very hard to remove heat. Try this tab to remove the connector. Connect the meter probes to the motor and measure the resistance. If the circuit is open, then you have a bad motor and need to order a new condenser fan motor and replace the old one. While you are waiting for the part, you should use a regular fan to blow air onto the condenser coil. Without this fan, the compressor will be too hot. We can use a box to seal the gaps around the fan. The airflow goes this direction. It comes in from the front, goes through the coil and a compressor, and then over to the pan with evaporated water. Cover and seal the back panel space to have proper convection to cool the condenser coils. When you connect the meter probes to the motor, and measure the resistance. If it is not an open circuit such as this one, 135 ohm, then you should check the connection or wiring. There is a disconnection somewhere. Situation two, the compressor is not running and the condenser fan is not running. Pry this tab to remove the fan motor connector. Connect the meter probes to the motor and measure the resistance. You see this one? It is 135 ohm, so the fan motor is good. Connect the meter probes to the connector. This measures the compressor. It is 1.8 ohm. The compressor is good as well. Since both the motor and compressor are good, we need to check to see if voltage is being delivered to the connectors. Connect the meter probes to the motor connectors and measure the voltage. See, there is no voltage. So it is not this section that is the problem. Next, we will trace to the control box to see why it failed to deliver electricity. But you may not have the time to do this, or you may not want to if you already ordered a new refrigerator. In that case, I will show you our first short circuit to make the refrigerator running again in two minutes. The idea is to connect these two wires directly to the AC power. First, we need to make sure the white wire is the neutral wire. Connect one meter probe to the socket on the connector for the white wire, the other probe to the neutral pole of the plug. It is conducting, so the white wire is neutral. We plug the refrigerator's plug into the power strip. For safety, the power strip's plug is not plugged in while I am doing this. So now the white wire is connected. Since the white is neutral, the pink wire must be hot. Jam a wire into the connector socket for the pink wire then reconnect to the fan motor. Use a power cord. I borrowed a computer monitor power cord. Insert the other end of the wire into the hot socket of the power cord. Use tape to insulate it. Put the monitor power cord's plug into this power strip. Now, we just completed connecting the hot wire. Double check from the power strip plug the resistance between hot and neutral to confirm it is around 2 ohms. 
Never, never connect the power if it is zero ohms. Note that this step is a safeguard so that we can short faulty components, but not short the hot and neutral. Plug in and turn on the power strip, and now it is running. Note that this compressor uses PTC type relay, so you should wait a few minutes before replugging to allow the thermistor in the relay to cool down. Close the back panel since the fan only works if it is closed. Since the temperature control is bypassed, I use a timer to turn the power off, or I set a cell phone alert to remind me myself to turn it off. Putting ice bottles in the fridge can also help stabilize the temperature and reduce how often it needs to be turned on and off. This is just a temporary fix so that food does not spoil. I don't want to promote this because it does not comply with building codes. Continue watching this video if you want a real fix. Situation number three. The compressor is not running, but the condenser fan is running. When the compressor is not around two ohms resistance, we can test the start relay unit. To remove the start relay cover, you need to lift this tab while pressing the body down to pivot around the tab. Let's look at this tab. There is a bump going into this slot. Inside the cover, you can see the bump. We notice three components, start relay, overload, and capacitor. The hot pink wire goes to the overload. The neutral white wire goes to both the start relay and the capacitor. This wire will connect to the run pin on the compressor. The blue wire connects the capacitor, and the relay will connect to the start pin on the compressor. Use a screwdriver to discharge the capacitor. Before any removal, it is a good practice to take a photo so that you know how to put them back together. Pry off the relay. Notice the three pins on the compressor. The center pin is called common. The left is run. The right is the start pin. If the start relay fails or the capacitor fails, I can make a short circuit to connect the run and start bypassing the failure component. Of course, this will increase the load and maybe shorten the lifespan of the compressor. Measure the start relay resistance. Between start and common, right two pins is 4.2 ohm. Between run and common, left two pins, 2.2 ohm. Leftmost to rightmost, start and run, which is the sum of the two values, 6.4 ohms. This is a working compressor. If compressor measurements are good, but it is not running, then the start relay is bad. To measure the start relay, remove one wire. Insert the probes into the two holes to measure the resistance. It is 5.4 ohms, a good value. I turn over the relay. It is the same value because this is a PTC relay. Note that some people suggest shaking the start relay to see if it has a rattling sound, meaning it has failed. That works for those kinds of start relay with coils, but it will not work for this type of PTC relay. For a PTC relay, when you measure the resistance, it is the same resistance if you flip it upside down. In fact, the resistance between any of the two metal connectors on the left to any of the two metal connectors on the right should be the same value. If your relay is a different kind, for example with a circuit board inside, you will need a different way to test. If you have a bad relay, you may short the two contacts, but only do so for a temporary short period because it may overload the compressor. Next, pry off the overload at the bottom. It is normal for the overload to have a rattling sound. So if a relay has a built-in overload, you can't use shaking to detect a faulty part. Normally, the overload is zero ohms. It only cuts off the circuit when overloaded. If the overload is bad, you can short the two contacts. You should use a timer to manually turn on the power to reduce overload probability, unless you are just waiting for your new refrigerator. So far, we have quickly identified problems and bypassed four faulty components, that is, faulty fan motor, relay, overload, and capacitor. There are two situations, however, that will take a longer time to deal with. If the compressor is running, but these two tubes have no temperature difference, you may have leaked refrigerant. This can be fixed, but will take more time. If the compressor does not run, and between run and start is open circuit, 
then there is no need to waste time fixing the compressor. Borrow some ice from your neighbor, use your refrigerator as a cooler, and wait for a new compressor or new refrigerator. When the lower section is not our problem, let's keep tracing to the control box. Remove the two screws that fasten the control box to the ceiling. Remove the two control knobs. Remove the plate. Remove the two screws on the frame. Remove this screw to release the damper control arm. Since the meter's probes are not long enough to trace the pink hot wire, we use this power cord to extend the length. Connect the condenser fan's pink connector wire to one end of the power cord. Connect the control board contact to the other end of the power cord. Since there is continuity, this red wire connects to the condenser fan. The same way we can verify the black wire connects to the hot power source. We measure the resistance between hot and neutral at the plug. It is 25 ohms. Now we can short the black and red wires. This is the same as connecting the compressor to the plug hot wire. Let's verify this. We measure the resistance between hot and neutral at the plug. It became 2 ohms. Now we turn on the power. The compressor is running. This is like our previous short circuit. But it is better we continue tracing until we find the real problem. There are two components in the control box, a control board and the thermostat. Remove two screws to see the control board better. The diagram on the board shows a relay. We can either measure the output of the relay or its input. The input, which is the output of the thermostat, is easy to measure. Remove one wire from the thermostat. Measure the resistance of the thermostat. If it is an open circuit like this, something may be wrong. Turn the coldness control to both maximum and minimum. If it is still an open circuit, use a screwdriver to this slot to manually lift the contact level. See? This is still an open circuit, so the thermostat is bad. To verify, we short the output of the thermostat. Now the compressor is running. This proves the control board is working, only the thermostat is bad. A single fault is much more probable than double fault. We can order a new thermostat from Walmart for $7. But before I receive the new part, I want to fix the thermostat to save my food. I pry the frame and take out the part with contacts. Now we can see there is an arm. When turning to cold, the arm is moved down. When turning to warm, the arm is moved up. We measure the resistance of the two contacts. This is an open circuit, even when we press the two contacts so that they touch. We wrap sandpaper around a screwdriver to clean the contacts. However, that did not work. We connected one meter probe to a razor blade. Use the blade to touch the bottom contact. The bottom contact is still good. But for the top contact, even though the copper strip is conducting, when it touches the center platinum contact, it is open circuit. We need to remove the top contact with pliers in order to fix it. See, the copper strip is conducting everywhere. However, the platinum contact fails. We use the pliers to squeeze the platinum contact. Now it is fixed. Put the contact back. It opens and closes as we move the contacts. To assemble this back to the thermostat unit, we need to turn the thermostat to its coldest setting so that the arm is lowered. Put the arm into the slot and move the tab into the locking space. Use a screwdriver to verify the arm can move freely. So far, we have fixed several problems, which represent the most common ones. But if the above fixes do not solve your problem, we can check other components that have a high probability of failure. Moving parts, such as motors and fans, have high probability of failure. This refrigerator actually has six motors, but only three of them, the condenser motor, evaporator fan motor, and the compressor, are running often. The evaporator fan motor is located behind the back panel in the freezer. If this motor fails, then it cannot blow cold air from the freezer into the refrigerator. You will have a situation where the freezer is cold, but not the fridge. 
To open the back panel, remove all the screws. Still, the rack supports are in the way, so remove the rack supports. Now the back panel can be pulled out. Remove one wire from the evaporator fan motor. Measure the resistance. It is 49 ohms, which means good. When the evaporator is working, the evaporator is cold and the fan is blowing cold air to the fridge. If this fan motor failed, then your fridge will be warm. While waiting for your new part, you may store food in the freezer. Or you may store some bottles of water in the freezer. When the bottles are frozen, then move them to the fridge to keep the fridge cool. The refrigerator has two heat exchangers. This black condenser coil heat exchanger is pretty hot. The condenser fan blows air to move heat from the coil to ambient air. The second heat exchanger is this aluminum evaporator behind the panel in the freezer. It is pretty cold. The evaporator fan moves the cold air from the freezer to the fridge. As the refrigerant turns from a liquid into a gas through evaporation, it cools the evaporator. The compressor compresses the gaseous refrigerant back to its liquid state. This process generates heat. See this tube going to the black coil is pretty hot. Refrigerators work by causing the refrigerant circulating inside them to change from a gas into a liquid, releasing heat, and then back to a gas, absorbing heat. With this basic knowledge, it will help you fix your fridge. For more information, check out our other detailed refrigerator videos. To repeat our safety advice, disconnect the AC power before measuring resistance. Double check the resistance of the AC plug before plugging into the power strip and don't touch any exposed wire when the power is on. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.